Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, project that uh, we conducted. Uh, this is joint work with Alex Armand and Ines Villela, who are sitting in the audience. Uh, this is um, a project on uh, conflict prevention in northern Mozambique. So uh, let me start with a little bit of uh, motivation. Uh, in recent years, uh, most of the major uh, violent conflicts have happened uh, in uh, Muslim-majority countries. And uh, Islamic radicalization is uh, one of the main correlates of uh, violent conflict in the world today. So the question that I'm going to target today is, uh, can Islamic radicalization and related violence be countered through campaigning by uh, local religious uh, organizations? So we follow a campaign uh, against violence uh, sponsored by religious organizations uh, in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique. Uh, as mentioned in the previous session, uh, Cabo Delgado has seen a violent uh, insurgency since 2017, uh, led by uh, uh, Islamic uh, radicals. Uh, there, was, there is also a link to ISIS which resulted in more than uh, 3,000 deaths and uh, 800,000 uh, refugees uh, to date. The campaign was sponsored uh, by different Islamic organizations and focused on the key uh, message that, uh, very simple message that religion is not violence. Uh, the campaign was broadcasted uh, through uh, community radios and individual uh, voice messages. Uh, these were sent to cell phones uh, and so we follow a radio treatment and the message uh, treatment, which were uh, randomized. So this is uh, an experiment. We measure impacts on survey attitudes and various behavioral measures, including on antisocial behavior and trust. Let me also tell you that this is the first time this, is proje this project is being, the results are being presented, or some of the, of the results, so this is preliminary. So in terms of, uh, uh, re preview of results, what we find, in case I don't have time, uh, and I, I probably will not have, have time for everything here, uh, the radio treatment uh, we find improves attitude significantly, uh, making people uh, less supportive of uh, violence and of extreme social views related to uh, radical Islam. Uh, we uh, don't find effects on antisocial behavior uh, uh, from this radio treatment. But we find that the difference between uh, in this uh, antisocial behavior that we uh, are able to measure, uh, we find that uh, a difference between harming Muslims and others uh, increases. So the, this difference increases. The belief that more antisocial behavior will arise also increases because of this uh, radio campaign. The radio treatment decreased coordination between individuals from different religions. We don't find significant effects of the message treatment uh, on cell phones, except for an effect on uh, perceiving Muslims positively. We don't find complementarity between the two, uh, the radio and the message treatments. So I'm going to skip uh, the literature because I, I don't think I will have time. Uh, let me just remind every, everyone about the context here. Uh, there was a substantial discovery of natural gas in Cabo Delgado starting in 2010. Cabo Delgado is remote and primarily uh, rural with high poverty and uh, child mortality rates, even for national standards. Uh, conflict started in Cabo Delgado at the end of 2017, as I mentioned before. Um, there are many associations with uh, radical Muslims, um, but I must say that most perpetrators are uh, Mozambican. So the treatments we follow are uh, the are can be described as follows. Um, these were de de developed by the two main uh, Muslim authorities in uh, Mozambique, Sijlamo, the Islamic Council of Mozambique, and the Islamic Co Congress. We also uh, partner with the Christian Council of Mozambique. So these three together, they compose the coalition uh, for this campaign. So the treatments consisted of interventions by the religious leaders of each group supporting peace and explaining how their religion supports peace. And so specifically, uh, you have a few uh, quotes uh, that are basically the messages that uh, were conveyed uh, to 
um, in the radio and also in the voice message, messages on cell phones. So the final message, religion is love and friendship. Together we shall walk to achieve peace. So in terms of the radio uh, campaign, the radio spots were aired in eight community radios spread around Cabo Delgado. Uh, there were daily broadcasts between June and July 2021 and two airings per day in between uh, September and November 2021. Both Portuguese and local languages were employed in the area airings. In terms of the voice uh, message treatment, this is uh, a partnership with a private provider experienced in delivering uh, information campaigns. So each individual in our uh, treatment sample received four uh, voice uh, calls during this period with approximately two uh, weeks in between. Uh, and uh, basically the voice calls were, uh, had the same content I've just described before. So from the various religious leaders. So the messages were sent from September to November 2021. The languages, languages that were employed were those of the listeners. The campaign had a high success rate with 87% picking up the phone on average uh, of the four uh, rounds. In terms of sampling, I'm not going to go over the, the full detail here. Let me just mention that uh, our sample is based on a previous study that we conducted which had a representative sample of Cabo Delgado, of the villages of Cabo Delgado, with 206 villages. This study was a study that was conducted before 2017, so just before 2017. Uh, we keep all these villages, but sa satisfying uh, two criteria. First, having reliable phone coverage, and second, still existing after the attacks started in 2017. From this, uh, we um, uh, reach a substantially lower uh, sized uh, sample with 146 villages. So this is the, the sample of villages that we take in this study. Within these villages, we were also uh, using the initial sample of uh, individuals uh, that we had from the previous study, but we enlarged this sample uh, through uh, phone contacting uh, the original sample or the people that we were able to reach in the original sample. And uh, we enlarged this sample to a sample of uh, 1,400 uh, individuals. So uh, following the, let me mention a little bit uh, about radio coverage here because that's going to be instrumental for, uh, for the research and uh, the voice message randomization that we follow. Uh, in terms of radio coverage, we follow the literature and uh, we construct topography corrected radio coverage uh, using uh, a model, which is the Longley Rice Irregular Terrain Model. So this model uh, takes in a station and um, antenna parameters, which we gathered from the stations, the radio stations, and topographic characteristics in Cabo Delgado to determine which areas receive a signal. Uh, from the station and uh, at what strength. So the assumption that we are going to uh, follow here uh, is that there is quasi-random uh, variation uh, in, for the radio treatment, uh, which is to say conditional on distance uh, from the antennas, the presence of obstacles between uh, the antenna and the listener is exogenous to the listener's behavior. Uh, we are going to assume in the results I'm going to show a standard threshold for quality of uh, radio signal, uh, which is a specific international standard. For the voice messages, we randomize treatment at the level of the village. So this is pure randomization. Uh, and we used uh, block randomization. So this is to uh, give you a sense. This is uh, Cap Delgado province. And uh, the blue areas are the, the, the covered areas in terms of radio signal, okay, for, from these eight community radios. The green spots are the uh, 146 villages in our study. Now, in terms of measurements, we uh, employ two types of measurements. Uh, first, survey data. So we conducted phone surveys uh, with our sample. Uh, we had the baseline in... Um, 
May to June 2021, uh, December to 2021, up to uh, February this year, we had the end line. We included uh, in the survey standard demographic questions uh, and also outcome uh, questions related, relating to outcome variables, uh, asking uh, about support for extremist uh, religious positions namely uh, related to violence, government and democracy, uh, social norms relating to gender, um, and the, the use of uh, photos. So in terms of uh, behavioral data, we also collect this behavioral data in the context of these, and specifically the endline survey, so by phone, and uh, we conducted a few uh, standard activities Namely, uh, we have this uh, uh, antisocial behavior measure that comes from a, a game that is called the Joy of Destruction, in which two individuals can destroy each other's endowment at a price. Uh, each participant is paired with two different individuals, one with, with a distinctive Muslim name and another with a distinctive non-Muslim name. We also elicit beliefs about what the other person is uh, going to do in this uh, activity. And then we also play a standard uh, trust game with two counterparts as well. Then we have a number of other behavioral activities in, in which we are able, uh, I'm not going to go over, I don't have time for this, but just to give you a sense. So um, we have an activity on, uh, which is called the SMS activity, in which people can pay to send a peaceful message, in which we observe with, whether people really want to pay uh, to send uh, a, a peaceful message. So this is incentivized with, uh, with, uh, with, um, uh, with value. Um, we have a coordination activity in which participants first select uh, their counterpart between two possibilities, a Muslim and a non-Muslim. And then they uh, need to coordinate to receive a prize. We have a salience activity in which people uh, hear, hear a story with different characters, some with Muslim names, some others with uh, non-Muslim names. After um, that, they are asked about uh, these characters. So this, this is uh, a salience activity in the sense of uh, memory. Um, and finally, uh, we have a perceptions activity which measures implicit prejudice against uh, Muslims and non-Muslims uh, using an index of uh, characteristics. I'm going to show uh, results uh, uh, on, on this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, this is very standard. We are going to estimate intent to treat effects, uh, basically uh, using um, uh, the, the two main coefficients here on the radio uh, treatment and on the message treatment. So very quickly on results, I'm going to skip the descriptive statistics very quickly. Uh, so we see effects of the radio campaign on uh, decreasing support for uh, religious uh, violence, also increasing support for democracy, and increasing support for uh, uh, gender equality. So we see uh, basically these effects of the radio treatment. We don't see effects of the message treatment for these survey questions. For the destruction activity, we don't see effects uh, of significant effects, uh, although the radio treatment has these negative uh, coefficients, so decreasing destruction. We see an increase in destruction of Muslims versus non-Muslims, which is uh, something that we, we need to ponder about. Uh, we also see an increase in uh, the belief uh, about destruction from the radio uh, treatment. We don't see effects of the message treatment here. Finally, with respect to the other behavioral uh, activities, we see negative effects of the radio campaign on trust, although these are not significant. We see a decrease in uh, coordination uh, in, in selecting the other religion uh, for the coordination activity. And we have some positive effects, namely for the message treatment, in terms of uh, the perceptions activity I mentioned before. So just to conclude, uh, the radio campaign was uh, particularly effective at improving attitudes in the direction of less support for violence, more support for democracy, and less support for extreme social norms. Still, 
we have a few caveats here. Uh, the radio campaign led to relatively more antisocial behavior against Muslims and a general belief that others behave or will behave in an antisocial manner. Coordination with individuals from different religions was also decreased, so we have to have in mind these caveats. We don't have clear effects of the voice messages, despite the high degree of hearing these, of these messages. So overall, we have good indications, although, again, this is preliminary evidence, um, and not fully optimistic because, the caveat, because of the caveats that I've mentioned regarding the mobilization of local religious organizations to counter Islamic radicalization through the radio. Thank you very much. <laughs>